In this video, I'm going to talk a little bit about the fungus kingdom. Uh, fungi are eukaryotes that are heterotrophs and decomposers. So um, they are the most closely related to us animals of any of the other kingdoms. And yet they're really foreign to us because they don't move, which at least to us animals would seem like a really weird strategy for being a heterotroph. Um, but they are decomposers, just to talk briefly about how important that is for the cycling of nutrients back into the soil and into the air for others to use. Um, it's really important that dead things that contain lots of carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and phosphorus, that those materials can be returned back to the environment for others to use. So decomposers play a really important role overall. Uh, fungi can be single cell. Those are going to be your yeasts, which are classified as fungi. But for the most part, we're going to focus on multicellular fungi with some of the rest of our discussion here. And then fungi have cell walls and they're made of chitin, which makes them unique um, in terms of a cell wall material. So if I were to think about a, a typical multicellular fungus, let's, um, this is kind of a neat little picture here of a fungus growing over kind of used coffee grounds. Um, so the white kind of webby um, um, stuff is the fungus. Um, and that really is the essence of a fungus. Usually if we think of, you know, what is a fungus, you might think of like a mushroom growing in a forest. And we'll get to mushrooms in just a minute because mushrooms are the reproductive structures. But really the most of the rest of the body of a fungus is actually this uh, thread stuff because those threads are going to be how they uh, find and digest their food that they're trying to decompose. Um, and so one of those individual threads would be called a hypha um, or hyphae for plural, the multiple threads. Or we can think about the entirety of the network within one organism as a mycelium. Uh, myco is often the root word for fungus in general. Um, and so that would describe kind of the bodies. Um, now let's think about how they actually digest. So fungi have a very different mode of digestion than us animals because they're going to digest things outside their bodies or extracellular, outside their own cells, they're going to digest. Because once they surround the food source with their hyphae, their hyphae are just going to secrete digestive enzymes outside their bodies to start breaking down the food and then they can kind of selectively take up whatever they want to um, take up from that digestion. Um, so sometimes I tell students that would be kind of like if you went down to the lunchroom and you just kind of spat all over your food, let those digestive juices kind of break your food up into, into smaller compounds and then you kind of lapped up whatever it is you wanted to take from your food. Sounds kind of gross to us animals, although I think fungi would kind of counter to that and say, well, you know, you animals take in the entire piece of food and you have to eventually get rid of the parts you don't actually take in. So I don't know what's gross or animal poop um, or just sort of leaving it out there in the first place like fungi do. In any case, uh, we could also think about how fungi get to the next food source. So if they don't move, how in the world can they get um, either themselves or their offspring to a new source of food? Well, as it turns out, they're going to get their offspring there. And that's really where the, the mushroom structures come in, or a little bit more generally the spore-containing structures. As it turns out, mushrooms are sort of only made by some fungi, um, but they all produce some kind of spore-containing structure. Um, and the idea is that maybe the spores are very lightweight, and that mushroom, uh, that, that fungi in general will make trillions and trillions and trillions of these spores. So that if they just randomly shoot their offspring and kind of hope for the best that one spore will land somewhere on a food source, um, then it will keep the species going. And if you ever thought about why then your uh, food might eventually grow fungus on it inside your refrigerator or inside your pantry, that's because we're basically constantly surrounded by fungal spores. But don't worry, um, generally you're adapted to kind of deal with that with your respiratory system and your immune system. All right, so let's just kind of finish with a few um, kind of special types of fungi that are really important um, in terms of their mutualistic symbiotic relationship. Um, let's talk about lichens. Lichens are uh, really a, a grouping together of some kind of photosynthetic organism, like an algae protist or a cyanobacterium, um, and a fungus. 
So the fungus kind of anchors it somewhere, um, maybe brings water and minerals from the environment. Uh, and then the algae, of course, will do photosynthesis to make food and kind of share some of the sugar that it makes with the fungus to keep it alive. And just what really makes lichens neat is their ability to survive in places where you don't find other organisms, um, especially in really rocky environments where soil hasn't formed yet. Um, lichens can be a really important uh, first group, a pioneer species, to survive and start breaking down the rock so that you can actually get soil for plants to grow. The other type of fungal relationship involves plants themselves. Uh, so this is a really neat little picture here showing maybe some kind of plant and its roots in yellow here. And then the blue threads that extend far beyond the plant roots would be the fungus. Um, so there are certain types of fungi that work with plant roots and we call that relationship a mycorrhiza. Um, so myco again for fungus and rhiza are kind of like roots. So basically the fungus just serves as an extension of plant roots. Remember that fungi with their mycelium really are just a huge network of threads. So the fungus can do a really good job of reaching out further into the soil and getting even more water and soil minerals. And once again, the plant being a photosynthetic organism can feed itself and the fungus. And we think that maybe the vast majority of plant species that we're aware of have mycorrhizal relationships with fungi. So we've talked about some basic characteristics. We've talked about how fungi eat um, and generally how they get their offspring to the next food source um, and how they are decomposers.